Hi, my name is Dave Phillips. I'm Senior Global Product Technology Specialist for Clean Air for Thermo Fisher Scientific. Today, we're going to talk about unpacking and assembling the Thermo Scientific 1300 Series A2 Biological Safety Cabinet. When the cabinet arrives, it will be on a pallet with a cardboard case. Today, in the interest of time, we've removed that cardboard case and we've also taken the stand off and assembled it. The stand was disassembled and packed and placed here against the back of the cabinet. One of the things that you should think about is on the back of the unit, we have this counterweight to allow for the easy movement of the window up and down. And for shipping, it's secured at four locations, two on one side, two on the other. You may need to remove or partially remove these before you move the cabinet into its final location if you don't have the kind of access you'll need to remove the screws afterwards. It will be raised onto the stand using a scissors lift and we'll move to that now. The cabinet will have an installation guide attached to the front window. In the installation guide, it will describe how to uh, unpack the cabinet from the pallet, which we've done, how to assemble the stand, which we've done, and how to place the cabinet onto the stand. Now the cabinet is actually attached to the stand through four screws threaded into the bottom of the biosafety cabinet. You'll find on the top of the stand, there'll be four keyholes at the top of each of these legs that allow the, the cabinet to be lowered into the keyhole and then slid forward to lock into place. And then you tighten the screws. And that's all described in the installation guide. So we have the cabinet on the stand. We have it uh, in position. We've set the stand at the highest position just because it's easier for us as a demonstration to put it for a standing height person. Normally it's set at the lowest setting, which would put the work surface at 30 inches, kind of the typical work surface for the seated position. But you can set it at whichever position you would like within two inch increments. The power cord is connected at the top. It's usually wrapped in a, some bubble wrap, which we just take it outside the bubble wrap and of course plug into the wall. We have removed the four screws holding the counterweight into place for shipping. So what we're going to do now is remove this packing material on the front of the cabinet and we'll move on to the things we'll find on the inside and we'll also attach the drain valve. Now we're ready to take the rest of the things from outside the cabinet. You'll see there's bubble wrap on either side of the work surface. We can lift up the work surface with these, uh, there's four large holes. We lift up the holes and then pull the work. We remove the bubble wrap. Here. And here. Let me show you something interesting. In here, you can see the tabs for the paper catch. This is designed to catch any papers that slip under the work surface before they get drawn up into the motor compartment and block and slow the motor. Very easy to clean. You hardly ever have to do it, but it's a very nice addition for the back of the cabinet. So let me put it back. We also have the, the armrest, so let me remove this so we can install that and replace the work surface. The armrests fit into some defined locations. If you look closely on the work surface, you'll see these larger slots. And now we're ready to put in the drain valve. In the front work surface, you'll find this little package. It contains an extra Allen wrench, some spare grommets for your smart port, and the drain valve. And we just thread it onto the exposed pipe, the drain pipe on the underneath of the cabinet. You'll notice that there's a valve. This is open and then we close it. So any spills uh, that we might have in the work surface that would go onto into the drain trough are now contained. So we've installed the drain valve. 
we've plugged in the unit and we can see the unit is powered because we have this green indicator uh, showing that there's power going to the unit. We're gonna turn on the work light. And now we can see the inside of the cabinet. We see the three media ports on the left. We see the smart port. We see the two electrical outlets in the back. The one on the left has a ground fault interrupter that protects the circuit for both units. And on the right is another smart port and three more media ports. There's two things we have to do still. You'll notice these two strings hanging down. They are to remind us that there's small bits of tape holding the UV germicidal light in place for shipping. So for units with UV, you will find these. And now we'll remove that. And now we're ready to use our unit.